Center paper is titled uh, Creating a Protocol for Collaborative Mobile Applications for Kids Between 4 and 6 Years Old. Um, the, the, the overview for this presentation is basically we are going to present us later, given the introduction, uh, we have some important concepts in you know, order to understand why we developed the protocol. Um, then uh, explain how we designed the protocol, how we implemented, and then some conclusions to the work related to this matter. And so on, and on later. <coughs> well, first, uh, here uh, we present Cristia Ramirez, who, who is a PhD candidate. Uh, she's a professor at the School of Computer Science and Informatics in the, uh, the University of Costa Rica. She's also a researcher on the Research Center of Communication and Information Technologies at the University of Costa Rica, also. Uh, myself, Franklin Garcia, I'm a software engineer. I have 12 years of experience in mobile technologies. Uh, right now, I'm a, I'm a so we're, I'm a lead and Android engineer at Logan, which is a, a North American company in the States. Uh, well, first I think uh, some of the previous uh, presentations mentioned that there is an importance, a great importance of using or introducing STEAM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics concepts in the early ages, right, on um, education. Um, we found that also, as previous uh, presenters also, also mentioned, that technologies uh, for the kids nowadays uh, is very influential and, and for us in, in the use of robotics also uh, reinforces that concept. Um, and why is that? Because as some already pointed out that children and kids today uh, are really found really easy to use technology. So actually that's, that phenomenon has been identified by Presti, uh, which uh, actually named the, this, the, this group of, this set of a person as digital natives, all the persons born from the 90s to now. Uh, so they are surrounded, they live with really mature technologies, uh, not like us that we're not so young uh, and we grow with technology, but we, are, we, we didn't, uh, born with the, the level of matureness of the technology as they have right now. So that's why it's so easy to them to uh, use mobile devices, internet, and other sources we have right now. And what is the importance of using to, to uh, reach them, right? Um, well, that field like collaborative learning, I think, is a little, was a little mentioned in the previous presentation. So basically, uh, based on the Johnson & Johnson uh, <coughs> work uh, about collaborative learning, I think we can resume or summarize it as uh, the importance of that working together uh, is easy to achieve, is a really good way to achieve uh, goals. Um, for that, this is really important in terms of education that uh, every member of the team knows exactly what his role is uh, and that Every role and, and every member is important to, in order to the team to reach the goal. Um, also, we base our work on um, Cesar Collazos, who divides the process of collaborative learning in three stages. First, the process where um, the activities and the tasks are set at the beginning, also like the, the group assemble, the rules, um, for example. Um, also, in the in process, um, Um, well, basically, which activities are going to perform, uh, the process of the teachers monitoring the, the, the work of the groups, um, of course, the intergroup collaboration that is performed during the activities, and that's uh, the process, process where the teachers evaluate the, the success of the activities performed by the students. <coughs> so, everything, this, all these concepts are uh, uh, are because we, the protocol we designed, is, is the important of those concepts on, on the design of this protocol is because 
Uh, this uh, protocol is part of the results of the ongoing uh, research of Chrysia Ramirez uh, for her PhD te thesis. Uh, we, are building, uh, we, we are building right now uh, so two prototypes well, that are called tech titots. It's basically an environment for kids from the four to six, eight, eight years old to teach them how to uh, program robots. So as you can see here, the, the, this is the very basic uh, application. Uh, we have a, a, tool, a, a toolbar on the left side of the screen so the kids can drag and drop the commands. And, and when they think they're ready to send the commands uh, based on the computer program that is given to the children uh, in the class, they can send the commands and then a robot is going to perform the activities on the, on the, based on the actions that, or the commands based on the commands that the kids give them to them. Um, uh, and next in the, in the photo you can see the prototype is actually this first version was built for Lego Mindstorm. Uh, we built the, the we designed the robot for, for the tasks. And we are actually applying this on Costa Rica uh, in in conjunction with uh, Fundación Martengo, which is a foundation, um, non lucrative foundation, that uh, wants to uh, impulse uh, the use of technologies in schools. Uh, so they they, uh, they provide the robots and they found us the schools so we can apply this application. <coughs> um, after that, we went uh, the, uh, early this year to Brazil in order to apply the same application, but uh, uh, seeing the limitations of resources in Brazil, uh, we found that we were able only to use one robot. Um, the, I, I forgot to mention in the previous that with the Fundación Mandelbo providing the robots, uh, we have one kit, one talent, one robot. But in Brazil, we found that we only had access to one robot with the limitation of the, of the resources. Uh, but uh, Drex Lab, which is a, a, a department of the Universidad de Santa, Santa, Catarina, Santa Catarina, the Universidad Federal de Santa Catarina, in Brazil, uh, they provide us with several uh, devices, actually about 16 tablets. Um, so we have to um, move forward uh, quickly in order to develop a, a version of TT Watsport for a, a collaborative environment. Uh, so we have one robot, uh, multiple children, we group them uh, in groups. Um, and a teacher is going to be the person that decides which group is going to send the uh, the commands for a given problem. Um, before that, before uh, before before building the application and deciding how we are going to do that, we have to decide if first if we are going to go for a centralized or distributed uh, architecture. Uh, we have to look at the pros and cons of, of any of those architectures in order to uh, develop the application. And also, uh, based on the devices uh, we have uh, available there in, in Brazil, uh, take, take that into account in order to design the program. Um, first, we looked into the distributed approach, uh, which we found is a little more complex in order to, uh, to develop it, because uh, there is an issue with uh, proprietary information across the devices. Uh, also, choose, decide which of the devices are going to send the commands to the robot. Uh, what we're going to have, what, what is going to happen if there is a, a disconnection by any of the commands, and what, how is going to recreate the information that is uh, held by the other devices? Um, the only uh, problems of this approach is that it's going to reduce bottlenecks and also distribute the, uh, <coughs> the resources across all the devices. The centralized approach, uh, but on the other hand, is going to need a device that's going to help all the connections, um, and this is the one that's going to uh, send the commands to the robot. Um, the, this, this only device is going to also be in charge of providing all the information to all the devices. Uh, there is a high risk on going to this, this approach because uh, this is going to be only one device ha uh, handling and keeping all the connections. Uh, actually, at the end, we decided we'd go through uh, this uh, approach, mostly because uh, it was easier to propagate information to the devices. Um, it is not part of the protocol to take care of, 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 of how to handle those connections, but uh, the development of the application itself is the one we translate the, the this complexity to the application itself. So, um, uh, we will move, 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 move forward to this uh, approach. Um, 
So in order to design the, pro the, the protocol, we have we, we follow the Cuyasus uh, classification of the collective, collective uh, learning. Uh, for the preprocess, we define some commands or the messages that we're going to define the setup and the group assemble. For example, it's going to assign the, an ID to every de device or every child using the tablet. Uh, it's going to define how the groups are arranged, in, normally in a random um, way. Um, for the in-process, the protocol must support uh, a way to uh, propagate information about the board status uh, of the game right now held uh, currently by the students. I also have handle the time of the actions because we want uh, that we don't want that a kid is going to uh, stall the process because it's taking too long for doing something. So uh, there is a time out there to uh, keep giving the, the chance to other students to, to um, help on the solution of the problem. And also uh, the protocol must support a way for the, for, uh, the teacher or the leader uh, in order to monitor the progress of the groups. Uh, for the post process, uh, something should be done on the protocol to, in order to receive when the uh, students are ready or the group is ready uh, through a vote, and then uh, a way to allow the teacher to verify the, the correctness, correctness of the solution of the group, so he decides uh, if the commands are sent or not to the robot. Uh, the implementation, we basically define a, a, a me um, messages that are going to be sent back and forward between the devices. The basic structure is uh, set like this, uh, an ID, so we identify every message sent uh, with identification. The type, which is going to be something I will display later. Uh, the timestamp is going to help uh, to know uh, when a message has been sent and also to synchronize the device's blocks. And the data, which is a structure, another, uh, a structure that will depend on the type, so it may vary depending on the type of the message. Uh, the types we identified, identified for the implementation was a uh, sign ID, which as you can see in the, this sequence diagram, uh, we have uh, the beginning, the, the device is connected to the teacher application, is that one is going to assign an ID, so the device knows which person is uh, in which device. Then we have two messages to ready check, uh, basically just to let them know the teacher that the student is ready, or why is it not ready. Uh, after everything is done, uh, the application is going to assemble the groups and then it's going to assign them uh, the, the group ID for, to all the devices, so every device knows which group belongs to. Um, then uh, we have a board status and action messages that the board status is basically just to send the status of the, the current commands uh, that a group, a specific group has. So uh, we propagate that using that message, the, the, all the information for a specific group. The action is a message, message is sent for a specific student to the teacher. So it's basically, basically a list of actions done, done to the board itself. So it's basically like add a command in, in a particular position, move a, a command from one position to another one, or just move an action, a command from a, 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 a particular position. When <coughs> all the students think the solution is ready, uh, they want to cast a, repo, a request vote. Um, they, they, uh, when they think it's ready, uh, the, the board response is sent to the uh, teacher, which that's what I marked there because it's something similar to the real response. Uh, it's a yes or no, uh, basically. Uh, and then when the teacher, when the, the students are thinking ready, they send a vote, uh, the response of the vote, and then the teacher knows when a group, a specific group, is ready to send the commands or at least review the command, the, the, the solution for a, a given problem uh, to the robot. Uh, as the conclusions, first we use JSON as the <coughs> message format for easier machining or machining because since we are using Android uh, to develop this, um, there is plenty of libraries to use in Java uh, to uh, convert objects to text and button power, so it's easier to uh, use that. And also, uh, we thankfully we were able to use one device as a master device, so it handled actually. We, we have, for example, 16 uh, devices connected, so uh, we have one socket for sending from one side and one socket uh, working backward, so it was the double of uh, 32 connections held by the device, so we knew that at the moment that uh, the approach was uh, easily uh, handled by the other device. Even with the limited resources that we have right there in Brazil, uh, with really modest tablets, uh, so we hope that this is 
going to be something uh, possible for more complex devices. Um, also, uh, for future work, we would like, even though we know that this will work well, uh, uh, we would like to work, find another more compact format for the messages um, to reduce the, uh, the latency between the messages and through the, through the devices. And also expand the number of messages in order to support more features like uh, assistant monitoring. monitoring. Um, and also, I think for us it's very important that we hope this uh, work helps to other people that uh, are planning to create um, productive applications, uh, use it like a guidance uh, at least, or well, maybe or they hope to do it or how not how to do it in terms of uh, productive applications so they know that there is something already done and, and how we had approached this uh, problem of communicating different devices uh, for a creative uh, learning environment. Um, well, we have the acknowledgement, I know that we are uh, out of time, so I think we are, uh, we say, Mr. Rica, pura vida, thank you.